If I had learned about crypto around DeFi summer, I would have earned a lot of cash. This is the summertime of 2020 when many new projects were introduced and gas prices were not as high. Instead, I was reading about SEO, designing a house's interior, and going on motorbike rides. Nonetheless, we may all be given another chance. In this video, we'll go over what DeFi 2.0 is, why it exists, and how you can take advantage of the early stages of it to earn some pretty tasty rates. Let's get started! Welcome back to Cryptique, a channel that gives critical evaluation or analysis especially in dealing with crypto. Everything regarding money, finance, investing, cryptocurrency and blockchain related topics including ICOs, NFTs and yield farming. First and foremost, we humans enjoy categorizing the things we enjoy, making things black and white or neatly categorizing everything so that we can comprehend it. That's precisely what happened with Web 1.0, Web 2.0, Web 3.0, and ultimately DeFi 2.0. We're basically just grouping concepts together and giving them a name so we can refer to them more easily. Bearing this in mind, let's continue forward. DeFi 2.0 is simply a label to classify a new notion now occurring in the realm of decentralized finance. I'm going to explain this as simple for you. The amount of money accessible for trade is known as liquidity. Let's look at a pawn store as an example. You're planning to buy a television from a pawn shop. When you glance around, you notice that there are just five different televisions. This indicates that the pawn shop has five television in its inventory or that its liquidity is five televisions. They are only allowed to sell you a maximum of five televisions. If you only want to buy one television, you might be thinking why is it important how many he has? Consider how much more supply he would have with 5,000 televisions with the same identical quantity demanded. If he only had one television, he could sell it for a much higher value, since demand would have the same number but supply would be significantly less. When it comes to cryptocurrencies, the liquidity number is critical since it determines where we may acquire them. I'm not referring to Coinbase or Binance or any of the other large crypto exchanges, but their liquidity is important. However, for DeFi 2.0, I'm referring to the liquidity provided by decentralized exchanges or DEXs such as Uniswap or PancakeSwap. These systems utilize a constant product automated market maker algorithm. Liquidity is only available to these DEXs if individuals provide it to them. So, in essence, you can only visit PancakeSwap or by SafeMoon if someone else has came along and offered PancakeSwap their SafeMoon to exchange with. For more technical explanations, the people that provide PancakeSwap, their tokens actually contribute two tokens in a pair, such as SafeMoon and then USDC. They do this so that they can profit on the modest cost that traders spend to actually trade these two tokens. Traders go to PancakeSwap all day to exchange SafeMoon or USDC. Other dealers then exchange USDC for SafeMoon. However, they are utilizing liquidity provided by someone else. Here's why it's significant. The price is quite variable if there isn't a lot of liquidity. I'm referring to the fact that if the exchange just has thousands of dollars worth of liquidity or thousands of dollars worth of tokens, a whale could simply step along and 10 times the price with that very little liquidity. Whales are people or companies who have a big quantity of money. A whale, on the other hand, can't really affect the price if there's millions of dollars in liquidity. Because there is more liquidity in the pool, it would take substantial changes to start influencing the price. Hopefully, you've grasped what I'm saying. So, if you think this video has clarified some things for you, 
please consider liking it and clicking that bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you might want to consider subscribing to our channel. It'll really help us out. Back to our video. Then there's the question of what liquidity mining is. So, in DeFi 1.0 or the old system, someone would offer people additional revenue to entice them to really offer their tokens to a service like PancakeSwap or Uniswap so that they could make a little cut from the trades instantly. However, because of the incentives, they would receive even more. These rewards are now called as farming rewards or even liquidity mining. The goal was to improve liquidity so that traders would have more money to trade with, influencing the price to be lower and making it less volatile. However, there is a concern with where the extra funds came from. In most cases, the reward is paid in the token that you're providing. This implies that you will first provide the token before earning it. Because they're giving away a handful of tokens to a handful of other people, this is technically quite inflationary. Typically, other people would receive it and then resell it, causing the price of that specific token to decline. It also suggested that after the extra awards were gone, no one would stay because they had come for the money. The solution is now straightforward. It's for a system to be able to offer its own liquidity rather than relying on others to do so. That is precisely what Olympus DAO is aiming towards. To summarize, DeFi 1.0 is characterized by a collection of crypto protocols that lean on other crypto users supplying liquidity in the form of their tokens for other users to trade with. This is fine for a period. However, there are some drawbacks. For example, if someone sells a substantial percentage of the liquidity pool, therefore reducing the token's overall liquidity, the token turns much more volatile and susceptible to whales. Other disadvantage is that users who submit their tokens may suffer for impermanent loss. This is a fancy way of expressing that there is a chance they will lose money and with a smaller chance of upside. Instead of requiring users to give liquidity and assume these risks, the solution is for the protocol to supply liquidity or at the very least purchase liquidity back from them. Simply said, a protocol can control its own liquidity. This approach, a whale won't be able to sell their share in a liquidity pool, which causes the price to fluctuate. In the instance of Olympus DAO, a new type of stable coin is formed, one that is backed by the protocol's own capital. Shareholders of a DAO can vote on long-term changes to the protocol. Today, a DAO is a crypto word for an entity whose token holders have the ability to recommend and participate in changes. You earn more votes if you have more tokens. In any case, the primary principle of DeFi 2.0 is that a protocol owns its own liquidity. It has actually spawned a slew of additional ventures similar to Olympus DAO. As a result of their popularity, these projects are able to provide astronomical interest rates, which they've been able to maintain for a long time. Now, if you want to get deeper into how Olympus actually possesses its own liquidity, We'll be publishing a full video on the Olympus Protocol very soon. And with that, this concludes our video. Acquired a lot of knowledge from this? We recommend checking out our other relevant videos from our channel. Also consider sharing this video to any friends or family members who might find it useful. Until next time!